nothing. Oh, Who was it who told you it was like three hours? What's that? Mum. She's like, oh, it's like three hours. Well, it's not. It's <laughs> Isabel the, said it's three hours. It's the traffic that um, is bad. I hope you're ready just to chill in Heathrow because. <laughs> well, we can stop for coming. Really bad. I'm not as late back as some of you After are. This is Theo, everyone. How are you doing, guys? My social media marketer one. slash videographer <laughs> slash life guru. The guy. <laughs> yeah, the guy. <laughs> So we've arrived at Heathrow and we're having problems just about to create the thing is So my camera's more subtle than Theo's, so I can get away with vlogging and he can't. <laughs> I know, I'm going to get stuck. <laughs> so we're going to find um, someone to get some food and then I'm going to do the intro for the FBI video. Um, and then talk to you guys a little bit more. <laughs> Olivia's all laid back. So where are we going? Yeah, where are we going, Olivia? I don't know at the moment. Hotel. I actually don't know, but you don't stress out about these things until you get here. Right, we're in Gothenburg Airport and we don't know where we're going. You should probably check that, shouldn't I? Yes. Yeah, it would help. Yeah. A bit laid back. Yeah. Right, I'll get on it. Okay. Laid back is not good. <laughs> Hi, Stephen. <laughs> how are you? I love how it's your yeah. name yeah. on it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's it. That's you. How come it's your name? Oh, no, where's your name? You can I just so get a close up of that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how it is. Yeah. The videographer gets special treatments. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah, I Ladies first. Go on, ladies. <laughs> There's no lady here. <laughs> There's no lady here. There's no lady here. So funny. Where's the key going? What number? We got Paul, Jim and Sauna. What number was it? Did you press it? Four? Yeah. Did you press four, Mum? No. <laughs> Please say that's still recording. It's still recording. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> oh, no. You'll find out soon. You've got to leave the camera going. <laughs> Not that close, you'll see my moustache. <laughs> oh, see, it's different for you. <laughs> yeah. What number is this? It's the floor, four, yeah. <laughs> right. Four, 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 two, three. Four, seven, five. Oh, you're all down here. So we're all settled into the room and mum's going to head to the bar and I'm going to go exploring with Theo and chat to you guys. Um. Well, we were going to go downstairs because Paul's down there and I need to get my accreditation thing, so I'm by the lift. So I can meet you downstairs, get that, and then we might as well crack on. Like, what do you want to do? Are you hungry? Yeah, so can I. Oh, hello. <laughs> so dinner's done and we can really chat for England because it's like 10 o'clock. Um, so me and Theo are going to go and check out the city. Um, then we're going to go to sleep and then we're going to wake in the morning and the adventure is going to start. Good morning. Hey guys, so it's the Friday. It's day one of the dressage for the FEI World Cup finals. And we haven't even been into the stadium yet. I'm so excited. But I've also got like a lot of different emotions floating around, which is something that you will see as the day goes forwards. Um, I'm going to try and talk to some of the riders, some of the grooms, some of the people that are there, and just get their views on stuff. But um, I think it's going to be an emotional one. Oh. <laughs> this is the dilemmas of like vlogging, trying to find stable camera stands. 
There we go. It's normally a lot easier than this though, isn't it? Because we're vlogging too. Yeah. It's like Inception. So as you guys know, we're in Gothenburg for the FBI World Cup. And the reason I'm doing this video is because I want to show you a little bit more in depth about how we vlog, what's going on. And I'm going to give you like some top tips I've learned over the years because I think I checked the other day and I've done about 250. And the things I've learned are mad, not even like the technical side, but the emotional side, things I've learned about myself. And I really want to share it with you if you're thinking about maybe vlogging or you're just interested. So a lot of people think, what can I get out of vlogging? A lot of people are thinking about sponsorship, fame, more followers. But the way you need to look at it is what value can I give the world? So what can I give the people viewing it? The thing is, people know when they're being sold to. They know when you're just kind of having this facade of just wanting to get attention. People want to be helped. So if you can do that for them, that in itself is going to organically grow your vlogs and your following. So my top tip for vlogging, actually social media overall, is not what can I gain, but what can I give? So we're currently getting some b-roll, that is what Theo's doing right now. B-roll is so important when it comes to vlogs, um, but we are going to explain about that later, so hold tight for that one. <laughs> She's like, ah! Oh, I can't go with this, like, run. Is that again? We're not going in the car, remember? We walked there. Oh, this is for our video. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretend to walk and then get in the car. Okay, so we have arrived and I'm just waiting for Paul, who is the guy who's helping organise all this. So he's going to show us around so we can see what kind of shots we want to get and then Theo can check out lighting, all that sort of thing, and then we will crack on. So we've just had a tour around the place with Paul from the FEI and he showed us the arena, we've seen where the riders get interviewed, we've been in the press room, we've done all that. And now what we're going to go and do is do a little bit of a clip in the stadium, which is next door, for the FEI video. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. But they're actually doing a demo. So at the moment I'm unsure whether I'm going to be able to talk. Because as you can hear, something's going on. So we can go check the demo out, let's do that. So reality of vlogging, we were going to do a certain thing. Um, but they're speaking over, so we've had to change plan. And that is another thing with vlogging, you have to be able to adapt to situations because it's not like, you, can't, you can storyboard it a little bit, but you can't storyboard it loads. Um, because it's just, that's the whole fun of vlogging. Like anything can happen, so you just got to roll with it. And luckily I'm a very relaxed person, so it works. Breath because we just walked up some stairs, but Look where we're going to film this bit. If you have a mind and a horse with four legs. <laughs> Lift. One second earlier. When he's in the air. These are the places we have to find. Um, we're just trying to get down from a high up spot. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even on the boat, I just wanted to see him. Mum's gone shopping. That's it. So we're going to find a quiet area, it's quite busy in here, to give you another top tip for vlogging and then the dressage is going to go and start so we're going to go watch that. So I've just done a little bit of a, another emotional thing, um, chat, I'm trying to find how to get in. I'm confused when Kate, I swear, no it's over there. Um, anyway, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go and get shots of the horses competing um, and then overlay it on the bit that I just recorded and my brain's going into mush because it's hard work vlogging guys, like it's, you guys see the final product, it's a, it's a lot of 
a lot of thinking. So let's talk about how to create a story within the vlog. So there are two ways to do this. One is you literally just turn up and vlog what you do. And that's what I do quite a lot when I'm at shows, for example, because I don't know how it's gonna go. Um, I can't like preempt everything. So I just kind of roll with it. And that I would say is the easier way to go about it. Or you can think of like a general story you kind of want to go into it and do. And then storyboard a little bit. But again, like I said earlier, you have to be quite flexible with things because it can change while you're vlogging. But the way you just storyboard is kind of say what you want to get out of the video, um, different shots you want to get. So like, for example, we knew we were coming here and we knew the shots we want to get. So shots of the arena, shots of um, the riders, all that sort of thing. And then we could plan a little bit more. What was he going to say? Are you filming? Yeah. So we're sat here trying to decide what to say for our vlog. It's again a lot of what happens with vlogging. You stand there and you're like, hmm, what am I going to say? So that is legit what I'm doing now, just standing here trying to figure out what to say to you guys. And Theo's like, something will pop up into your head. No, it hasn't yet. I don't know. Um, yeah, you're still filming, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> what thing would I tell you to do? Oh, so um, I think I've covered it though, being like embarrassed about vlogging in front of people because yeah. I did just get quite embarrassed about vlogging in front of all these top riders because a lot of people like, obviously don't know what you're doing and it can be embarrassing but then what I always think is when I go home and I look at the footage I'm like, I wish I'd just done it um, because people are always going to judge what you're doing at the end of the day I'm trying to help as many people as I can with my vlogging so I've just got to remember that and just man up Come on! <laughs> so the next tip I want to give you is about B-roll and it's one of my most favourite things I ever learned and it's not as complicated as it sounds. So basically, say you need to do a long speech and you don't want people to just get bored of just like one shot. What you do is you shoot the speech and then you can overlay different shots um, over the top of it so it will be like different interesting things and it will just keep everyone's eyes focused and yeah it's just much better it's less boring than watching just someone talking all the time um, you can do it in slow-mo you can really like set the atmosphere of where you are and it's just a lot more fun so as you can see vlogging does step into your personal space sometimes that's why I'm editing at dinner uh, I'm gonna have to edit this tonight so what I'm going to do is tomorrow I'm going to talk you through the more like technical side, um, what I use, like camera software and yeah, a little bit more of that. But for tonight, I'm just going to have to crack on and edit. So as you can see, it's day two. Um, feeling much more fresh now after some sleep. And as this is a vlogging thing, I have, funnily enough, just bumped into a friend. <laughs> Hi guys! <laughs> so I thought what better person to ask about vlogging than this Esme because she is absolutely <laughs> killing it in the game of vlogging. Oh, thank you. Um, so do you have any like major tips you'd give my followers on like if they want to go into vlogging or how to start YouTube? Um, just start off small, just do it for fun. That's the main yeah. way to get into it. But also there's other little tips and tricks. We both actually have the same vlogging camera here, which is quite cool. Um, so I definitely get, try and get yourself hold of a camera that has a flip screen just so you can sort of see what you're filming it can come out But the main important thing is when you're filming always look at the lens oh, Not at that. that's such a big if, one. Yeah, if not it looks like you're looking up all the time So Did you look at that the mistake camera. originally? Like yes, staring. I think we all, we all do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like why does it look so odd? Yeah, nice and um, do you have anything about balancing like vlogging with normal life? Oh, that's tricky because at the moment I'm currently studying for my A-level exams, doing the whole YouTube thing and then balancing horses as well can be tricky but the main thing is having a schedule and sticking to it and just being, if you're motivated then you can get everything done. Yeah, so, so true. you're super motivated. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so I also have some questions from Instagram. Yeah, from Instagram. <laughs> so the first one is, so if Casper had a different name what would it be? Well, Casper actually came with his name and I thought it suited him quite well because his sort of show name is Casper Friendly Ghost because he is a slightly spooky horse, um, so a bit like a ghost. So um, I don't really know what would suit him. I just, I guess sort of just like a normal, like human name, but kind of horsey. I don't know, like, oh, this is a tricky one. 
Oh yeah, I always call, Casper does have a couple of nicknames. I always call him Bubba C because when we got him, he was Bubba quite young. Bubba C, that's yeah, so cute. Bubba C because he's like the baby, so he's the youngest on the yard. So yeah, he's Bubba C to me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, would you ever try dressage? I would. I would actually love to. I've recently got myself a dressage saddle, so hopefully I can improve our flat work together. So I definitely would like to do a couple of local dressage shows, but maybe one day I can Yay. meet you at your yard and do some dressage That'd be together. So good. Yeah, we should definitely do that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What is the highest you have ever jumped? I personally, I'm not really sure because I've just put the jump up and jump it. I don't jump for the height. The main thing with jumping is actually the flat work in between the jumps. The horse jumps the jump, you have to set them up correctly. So as a course, I'd say probably about a metre, a metre ten, but I've never pushed Casper, like Chase Me Charlie, high. to do, yeah. <laughs> but that was at like home, so uh, yeah. Oh, favourite event to watch? This is a tricky one because there are a few that I haven't been to before that I am going um, this year, such as the Royal Dublin Horse Show and um, the Adelaide um, event in Australia. So I'm not really sure. I'm really enjoying Gothenburg today. It is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's, it's massive, absolutely amazing. It? But um, I really enjoy going to Burley because obviously cross country day is absolutely incredible. Watching the horses jump these massive solid fences. So that's definitely one of my favourites. Amazing. And if anyone wants to follow you, and if they don't already, um, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel, This Says Me, or my Instagram, This underscore Esme. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, it's nice to meet you. <laughs>the next thing I need to tell you guys about is editing and this can scare a lot of people because they think it's very complicated and don't get me wrong when I started I remember sitting down I didn't even know that you needed editing software I didn't know that you needed a particular computer and I sat there and I was like how on earth do people do this so I hit my old friend Google and I was like how do you edit what do you need and I just started reading and looking into it so I started with a software called Sony Vegas Pro, but I just didn't get on with it. I found it too complicated. So I moved to using Final Cut Pro, which I personally find the easiest. There are other ones, um, but this one really suits me. And then I got myself a Mac laptop because the other thing that I needed was, I was doing it on my um, home computer and it was lagging, which basically means like it's jittery because the computer can't handle the footage. So I needed like a different laptop as well. So that's probably the most expensive thing for vlogging for me was getting the software and getting the laptop. Once I had all that though, they have both lasted me for like three years and I mean I've really gone to town with them so it was a worthwhile investment. So as for the cameras, I know Esme spoke about it a little bit earlier and I would totally agree like flip screens are the best ones and that's what I've got as well. I would say if you're worried about cost though because um, that can be a lot of people's uh, queries when it comes to vlogging is to just try doing it with your iPhone first. Um, so that you know like if it's something you want to do and then you can make an investment. I would say though, I started doing it with my iPhone originally and I think I vlogged a three day show and my iPhone, the back of it melted, the battery melted and completely broke my phone. So if you're going to go hard at the vlogging thing, you'll definitely need a camera. Um, but yeah, don't stress out too much about having all the equipment, all the gear. Because the thing is with cameras is there's a weird thing of the, the higher up they go in price, there's a bracket where they do improve a lot, but then once you get to a certain amount, there's only minimal things they start to change in it. So don't think that you have to have these incredible cameras to go out and start vlogging. So we've had a hectic two days filming for the FBI and making this video. And as you can see, like quite a lot goes into it. It is really hard work. Um, I feel sometimes I am in conflict of maybe that I've sacrificed quite a lot to do this vlogging and maybe I should have been putting it into the riding but I just felt like I had so much to give with it and I just wanted to spread such a message of positivity and show people my journey and show them that it is possible that I I wanted to do the impossible and a lot of people have said to me like I, I don't know how you think you're going to be a professional rider and how you're going to be like a professional vlogger like it's not possible no one's ever done it and I just want to be one of those people to show them that it is. Like the vlogging has helped me so much to discover about myself. So I found out about my personalities. You know, when you watch yourself back on video, you watch a day, you go, actually, you are being negative about nothing. And it kind of gives you that little kick up the bum. So, you know, like my slogan, don't play the victim. I can really notice when I am on the vlogs and it really makes you more self-aware. So it's such a positive 
in that aspect and also it's such a positive that I get all this feedback from people saying how much I've helped them so that for me it's just a win-win so if you are thinking about doing it and you do feel like you've got something to give the world then I just tell you to go for it guys I'm always gonna do that <laughs> Where are we going, man? We're going to Gothenburg. Whee! To the stadium.